First of all, um, we're going to go through that Thomas test. So, Glenn, what would you do for the Thomas test while we go? Yeah, I'm going to use the couch over here. So, if I bring PJ round here for me, the setup for this is quite important because what a lot of people will do is they'll sit on the couch and then when you end up taking them back, you run out of space, you can't do all of the components. So, um, I ask my clients, in, P in this case it's PJ, just bring yourself to you feel the couch on the back of your thigh. I'm going to bring this pillow here, so we're trying to gauge his height. Um, if we're looking at the, let's look at the left hand side for the benefit of the camera. Pull your right leg up into your chest for me PJ. So this side for me, wow. that's it, fantastic. Okay. And then pull that up nice and tight. Allow yourself to just sit back onto the bed. There's a pillow waiting for your head. I'm just going to guide him down. There we go, good. And then just let this left one hang. Yeah, let it go nice and loose. So I work on a, a pass or foul basis with a lot of these muscles that we're looking at here. So straight away we come round to the hip flexors. Um, you want to have the leg either parallel with the bed or below it. Yeah, and if that's the case, then I would classify that as a pass. I'd say your hip flexors are, t are testing within normal range. If his leg was to be sitting up here, I would classify that as a foul. Yeah, and then you can specify the number of degrees off of neutral that you are. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, PJ's testing fine. Now we want to look at the quads. So we've, we've got the hip flexors in place. That's no problem there. I've come down here. Yep. Yeah, and then we're looking at the angle of the knee. I should be able to bring his knee to 90 degrees flexion without any significant issue. And again, pass or foul, can I, can't I? If he's stuck out here, then I'm, I don't know, 10, 20 degrees off of 90. So that would be my um, starting point if it was a foul. So again, PJ is nice and flexible here. We're getting um, hip flexors within normal range and quads within normal range. For the ITB, I would hold that position. Yeah, so I'm holding the um, hip in a neutral position and I'm holding the knee in the 90. And I'm going to just bring him across here. And we're getting a little bit of tightness there, but not too much. Again, PJ's testing within normal range here. What you're looking for is often the leg will raise up as you bring it across. So as I come across here, it's going to raise up there. What sort of angle would that position. would you be looking at? What sort of angle of? Across into a deduction. Yeah, I'm coming into a deduction. So yeah. would you be looking for, like with the pass or fail? Would you uh, with the pass, I wouldn't look for too much because we're winding it up quite significantly with the quads as well. So if we can get to about 10, 20 degrees maximum without any significant compensations, I'd be happy with that. Okay. Uh, that's quite quite rare, especially yeah. if you're treating runners or athletes or anything like that. So what you'll often see is this raise up here, or, which is quite easy to miss and, and use as a false, uh, false positive, is as I come across here, he's so tight along this lateral aspect that his whole trunk shifts across. You know, so we're not actually getting a movement there. He's just pelvis and trunk is shifting to facilitate yeah. that. So I'll keep an eye on his, on his pelvis as I'm doing that as well, and there's not any significant movement here. Mm. So they're the three components that you're looking for. I'll obviously test left and right. Um, and see if there's any difference between the two and make sure that your client is holding this on nice yeah. and tight. I was going to say, I think the important thing as well with this one is that you've got um, that lower back in a, a neutral position and you, you, so the knee has to be close enough to the chest. What you can do to start with as well is just pop that hand under the back and just make sure that they're, they're fully or they're flexed enough that their back is um, in a neutral position. There's not too much um, lumbar lordosis or arching of that lower back because again that's going to impact definitely your your well all the tests really but definitely the kind of rec fem um, and hip flexors um, yeah. are going to be you know you're going to get some false um, negatives by doing that um, because the lumbar spine is overtaken so just make sure that they're in a nice neutral position for that so, yeah and this um, end range position should help counterbalance that as well because it's mm -hmm. essentially pulling that pelvis round into posterior rotation yeah. and not allowing that um, excessive lumbar lordosis to occur to a certain extent, not completely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so if we get.